Alright then, so while I was away in New York for the Comic Con, I missed the Season 3 premiere of The Flash entitled Flashpoint. Luckily, I'm back down because Episode 2 of the newest season entitled Paradox also premiered this week. I figured I might as well talk about them both at the same time. As we join the show, we can see Barry is living in a splinter timeline created after he saved his mom from the reverse Flash at the end of last season. For the most part, it's going pretty good. He has his parents, he has his speed, he's even trying his hardest to meet Iris all over again again for the first time. But wait, you're all probably asking yourself, if that's the case, then who's out there protecting the city if Barry is on more or less an extended vacation? Well, the answer to that might surprise you. It's a new, younger Flash who has risen up to protect the city, and yep, that's right, it's Wally West, the Kid Flash, finally. I gotta say, Lonsdale does a great job in this new role, too. He owns the trash-talking super speedster. He's so good, in fact, I hope we see him show up again later in this role. Why Kid Flash even comes complete with his own arch nemesis in this alternate timeline, The Rival, who it might surprise you to find out is actually a character from the comics. You see, The Rival was a Golden Age Flash bad guy who more or less served as an evil doppelganging speedster to Jay Garrick, but more on him in a minute. Yeah, it would seem like everything is working out for Barry Allen for a change, but you just know there had to be some sort of horrible snag, and that is the fact that he is slowly but surely losing all of his memory of the original world and timeline, and as the Reverse Flash, who is currently being held captive, tells him, soon these memory losses will become permanent as the new timeline becomes the Flash's only timeline. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we didn't really get to spend much time with the non kavanaugh version of the Reverse Flash, but I will say, I dug what the actor did in this episode. He's captive, but he does a great job showcasing that he knows more than everyone else and holds all the cards in this situation. The major thing hanging over Barry's head and turning his conscience inside out is how this new world affected his friends and family. Joe is now a drunk estranged from his daughter and damn near close to getting shit can. Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting to think that it was getting Barry into his life that caused Joe to, you know, get his things in order and not crack under the pressure. Funny to think of the road not traveled. To try and combat the rival and put things back the way they were, Barry ends up enlisting the help of Cisco, who has become the head of his own own major tech corporation. Yet, no matter what Cisco does, no matter what the timeline or what costume he's wearing, the dude is always entertaining. This, as is so often the case, leads to a big old super speedster brawl where we get to see the action turned up to 11, but it's not all sunshine and roses. The good guys win the day, but Wally is terribly injured, and as such, Barry rightly so blames himself. And I mean, yeah, our hero is basically playing make-believe with time and space and was only a matter of time before something bit him in the ass. This means the Flash is forced to turn to Thawne, his greatest foe, in hopes that together they can get things back to the way they once were, which they do, but hey, this is the reverse Flash we're dealing with, and because he's such a bad guy, he's sure to screw things up just a little bit for our hero before the end. And with that, we are led into Episode 2, Paradox. It seems that most of the Flash's history has been repaired, but now his team is at odds with each other. Instead of coming clean about everything, which he totally should have done, by the way, his first stop is actually Felicity in Star City, the only person who he believes he can actually confide in. And, you know, also, hey, God forbid, you know, we should go a new season of The Flash without reminding you that Arrow exists, right? Hey, you know, considering that time travel was such a huge component of these first two episodes, this might have been a great chance to work in the Legends of Tomorrow, but, you know, even though those guys deal with time travel all the time, their show has zero rules or internal logic, so maybe for once it was best to go to Felicity for help. In this newest timeline, we find out Joe and Iris won't speak to each other, Cisco straight up hates the Flash, stemming from the fact that he refused to use his powers to resurrect his dead brother Dante, who died in a drunk driving accident. This is some really heavy stuff to throw at the audience, but it proves to illustrate a point about Barry abusing his time travel powers. It's a real big issue, and one that I'm glad to say the two episodes deal with in a really interesting way. Time, as we find out, is actually much different than Barry left it. For one, he has a new foil in the form of Tom Felton's Julian, a brand new metahuman expert who lives to make our hero's life all that much more difficult. It's funny, I heard the former Draco Malfoy stopped acting for a bit because he didn't want to get typecast as bad guys. I guess being casted as 
jerk is, you know, just fine for him. Then there's the matter of Dr. Alchemy, this season's new big bad voiced by the totally awesome Tobin Bell. Alchemy seems to be able to awaken people's sleeping meta powers, and he does this for the rival in hopes that he will kill the Flash for him. Feeling the walls closing in around him, Barry once again tries to travel back in time and fix things, only to be met by the awesome cameo that is Earth 2 Flash, Jay Garrick, who tells him that if he keeps abusing time, he's going to cause a lot more damage, so he better just deal with the cards he's dealt for once. I thought it was really cool getting to see John Wesley's ship again, and it's even better for him to be the wise older speedster sage telling Barry to nut up and handle his business. It's also good from a writing standpoint to really put their foot down and go, look guys, we just can't keep hitting the reset button whenever we want. Barry does indeed settle his business by the end of the show, which means getting involved in an unfair fight with both the rival and Dr. Alchemy, one which is only won by Vibe stepping up for a sweet-ass superhero combo move. You know, they say that Cisco won't be in the Vibe persona regularly, which honestly, I don't know why Cisco is awesome. Cisco with powers is even better. Why shouldn't the Flash have a sidekick? I mean, I guess Arrow is already doing the multiple heroes thing this season, and it would be weird if both shows did it, so yeah, I guess that's why if I had to guess. Seriously though, this is going to be a question they're going to have to answer, especially as the CWDC superhero universe keeps getting bigger with more and more superpowered individuals, you're going to have to explain why they don't all swoop in. In summation, Flashpoint and Paradox were pretty good episodes. If they were let down by anything, it's the fact that they took so long to build up these new interesting worlds, only to tear them down by the end and have the status quo more or less returned. What works about The Flash show continues to work in this season. I also love the new additions like Dr. Alchemy as the bad guy, and you know, it's nice to see Barry to not be above a reality check every so often. Overall, I would give these two episodes jointly an 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.